In this video tutorial, we're going to introduce and create macros for creating visualizations both interactive and automated. Here we have a map of Australia, with the territories and the red square shapes on each of these states. As I hover over the red shapes, I get that little hand icon, and when I click on it, it works fantastically. It shows me the core waste ton for the each state. So, by the end of this video, you're going to build some fantastic interactive features for our visualizations and our worksheets ready to use for dashboards and graphs. So, let's dive in. So, what is a macro? A macro is a small program that can automate repetitive or difficult tasks. They can be coded from scratch. But Excel comes with a built-in macro recorder, where you can record yourself going through certain steps and then just play it back. That's the approach we're going to take. In this workbook, we have a waste management report with the core waste ton PC per state. The last column right there is the compounded annual growth rate over the 10-year period from 2013 to 2023. Also over here in cell K1, we have a list of the territories or states if you prefer, okay? This list is very easy to create. From the data tab, you click on this validation button and from validation criteria, you choose list. Then you can highlight the state cells from B5 to B12. Okay, and the list is ready. Great. Also, we have a map of Australia with the territories and red square shapes on each of these states. I found the map from the internet, so it's easy to find the same or a similar with the territories. These are very simple square shapes that I took from the insert tab, illustrations and shapes. Very, very easy. Now, what Bill wants to do is to add a conditional format to the spreadsheet. He wants to be able to select state or territory by clicking on the map and then have the core waste data for that territory highlighted. So let's start by doing the conditional format. This is a bit different because we were adding a conditional format to an entire row. So we're going to select our data from B5 to I12 and come up to conditional formatting over here. And we're going to need to come up with a new rule because we need a formula for this, right? Well, then we're going to click back into the bar where we enter our formula and we're going to type out equals. We're going to click on the first state and we want to see that it's equal to K1, but you'll notice it's put those dollars on again. All right, what do we want to do? As it goes down evaluating the states, we do want it to change, but as it goes across, we need it to keep referring back to column B. So we're going to press our F4 function key twice, so we still have the dollar in front of the B. That's what you need to fully understand the differences between the relative and absolute references. Let's continue. We're then going to type equals and check if it's equal to K1. Now we need to add a format. Let's press this format button. So let's make it light blue from the fill tab. And from font tab, we will change our font color to white. We're then going to say OK and OK. ACT's data is highlighted because ACT is in K1. If I come to K1 and change that to Northern Territories, that's working. Very cool. Now, how do we link up our map to the drop-down list? What we're going to do is we're going to record a simple macro where we record ourselves typing the value ACT into K1. We then have the option to link any graphical object to a macro. So we're going to take the square shape covering the ACT region and we're going to hook that up to our ACT macro. Before we can record the macro though, there are two important things that we need to do. The first one is saving our workbook as a macro enabled workbook because normal Excel spreadsheets do not support macros. Very important. So we're going to come to File, we're going to click Save As, we're going to change this from an Excel workbook to an Excel macro enabled workbook, and we're going to click Save. The second thing we have to do is show our developer tab in the ribbon. Here is mine, but it doesn't show by default. So if you haven't used it before, come to your file tab, come down to options, come to the customized ribbon and put a tick next to developer. Then just say, okay. The developer tab should now appear and we're going to click on that. The first group in the developer tab is called the code group. This gives us all the tools we need for recording, editing and running macros. Before we hit the record button though, we're just going to make sure that we click away from K1 because the first thing we want to record ourselves doing is clicking on K1. 
So do that, and then click Record Macro. Now we have to give our macro a name that's unique within the workbook. I'm going to call it ACT. And then you have the option of giving it a keyboard shortcut. But Control plus A, in fact, Control A through Z are already accounted for. So if you hold your Shift key down, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift plus A. We're then going to say OK. Now anything we do is going to be recorded. We're going to start by clicking on K1. Don't use the drop down. Then click wherever you want the active cell to be when the macro finishes running. So I'm going to click on L1. Now, really important, you must stop the recording, okay? Let's do another one. So I'm going to click record macro, and this time I'm just going to call it NSW. I'm going to make my keyboard shortcut control shift W. Just hold the shift, not the control, and say, okay. Again, click away into cell K3, for example, and press stop recording. Let's test if these macros are working. So we're going to press Control Shift A. Yeah, that worked beautifully. And now Control Shift W. Fantastic. So really easy to create a recorded macro. If you have any questions about recording macros, please write them in the comments section and I'll answer as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video so far, and if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe. This is really important for me. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. Alright. Be quite good to see what these macros look like. So we're going to come up with our code group. And click on the macros button. This dialog will allow you to run the macro if you don't have a keyboard shortcut. You can delete it if you've made a mistake and just start again, or you can edit the macro. We're going to click edit. Welcome to the VBA Editor. The code that we're looking at is Visual Basics for Applications. This is code that our macros are written in Excel. At first glance, it might look a little bit foreign, but we're just going to take a moment to break it down. All recorded macros begin with the word sub and end with the word sub. Make sure any code that you want to run appears between those two and that you don't delete them. The stuff in green is what we call a comment, but it's going to be ignored by the compiler, so it's not actually going to run. But it's useful for giving information about the macro, like who wrote it, or when it was changed. If I wanted to remove a line of code, I could just put an apostrophe, and you'll see that comment sit out. And if I remove the apostrophe, it's back. Getting into the code itself, range k1.select, well, we can work out what that's doing. It's selecting the cell k1. We're then changing the value in the active cell to be ACT. Then we're selecting the L1 cell. Not easy to write from scratch, but very easy to understand and very, very easy to change, okay? So rather than going and recording my other six macros, I can just copy and paste this and edit it. I'm going to select the data, the macro for New South Wales, Control plus C. Click underneath the end sub and paste. Now all I need to do is replace all the NSW with another state. So I'm going to go to Western Australia. Don't have the keyboard shortcuts, so I'll remove that. Then, very important, make sure the active cell is changed to WA. Now to get back to our workbook to check this, you could close the window or the great keyboard shortcut Alt plus F11, which toggles you between the spreadsheet and your code. We're going to test the WA macro, but we want to test it by clicking on the map. So we're going to come up to the red square, which is a shape just over the WA territory, and the shapes are brilliant. You can hook up your macro to any geographical object, but shapes are a very versatile option. So I'm going to right click on that shape, I'm going to come to assign macro, I'm going to choose WA, and then say OK. Now let's repeat the other two we've set up. So I'm going to come to New South Wales and assign macro. The same with the Australian Capital Territory. Now let's go and test them. As I hover over the WA shape, I get that little hand icon, and when I click on it, it works fantastically. 
Same for New South Wales and the same for the ACT. So we've seen how using a simple recorded macro, we can add some fantastic interactive features to our visualizations and our worksheets. For your optional homework, try finishing off the rest of the macros and hooking them up to the map so that it works nicely. Now before we wrap up, if you've enjoyed the sneak peek into the power of interactive visualization combined with macros and VBA, you're going to love what's in store for you in our Excel Dashboard Masterclass course. Over 40,000 professionals have transformed their Excel skills with our Dashboard and Data Visualization course. So whether you're starting out or looking to sharpen your Excel skills, this course is going to be your ticket to becoming an Excel Pro. Check out the link in the description to start learning today. Thank you for watching till the end. Thank you for being here, and don't forget to like this video if you found some value in it. And do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I'll catch you in the next video.